welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to talk about families. And particularly, we are going to focus on adoptive families or adop adoptive families and how that kind of family is very significant and very important. If you have a question for this evening, feel free to give us a call at 781-270-9199 or if you have a thought after the fact or have a suggestion for a future topic, please feel free to email me at talk at bcattv.org. And I would like to thank the cast and crew, first the crew, then the cast, of tonight's show. We have Corey McNeil and Kyle Ruffin, who are staff members here at BCAT, and they keep the place running and make sure that I look as good as I can on the show. And we also have lots of volunteers here to help me tonight. We have Colleen Moore, who is director extraordinaire. We also have Maddie Shipka, Tatiana Hopkins, and Mark Laurie. So thank you guys for giving up your Wednesday evening and coming to help out and there is some apple crisp in the back room if you get hungry. And last but definitely definitely not least, I would like to thank my husband Paul for staying home for daddy date night, hoping that Gwyneth and Evan are behaving themselves and they go to bed relatively easily without a fight. There, I think I got all the logistics out of the way. Next, I would like to welcome my wonderful guests. We have Kathy. Kathy Gallagher. Gallagher. I'm like, <laughs> You're blanking. Okay, who do I want to do first? <laughs> I actually have it written okay. down here. I was going to say Michael Gallagher mm -hmm. and his mom yes. because she's kind of, she changed and That's how I go name. by now. I'm and just yeah. Michael's mom. mom. I was just about to say, yeah, you're Michael's mom yeah. now. Um, but Kathy and Michael, who have been willing to give up their Wednesday evening to come and talk about their family. Yeah. Because your family's a little different than mine. And I want to find out a little bit more about that. So first I'm going to ask your mom a couple of questions, and then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then you can ask me questions if you want. And if anybody from home wants to call in, they can ask us questions too. Oh, okay. Go with her. Go with so me one first. big happy yeah. family. We're just going to talk. Yeah. So, Kathy, can you tell me a little bit about where you grew up okay. and where you went to school and basically how you met your husband Okay. and when you met your husband? Yep. Uh, so I grew up, I'm a West Roxbury resident, so I grew up in the city of Boston, okay. in West Roxbury. And, you know, went to the local um, Catholic grammar school, St. Teresa's, okay. and then went to Boston Latin School for high school, and then stayed local for college, went to Wellesley College. And then years later, ended up working at a company in a Somerville. Girl? I'm a Wellesley! I never knew yes, that! Yes, I'm a grad. Smithy! Well, there you go. There I you know go. I liked you. <laughs> so, um, okay. years later, I was working at a firm in... Uh, Somerville in Davis Square and okay. that's where my husband ended up getting a job as well and we randomly you know would have lunch together hang out with the same group of friends and um, you know we dated for a little bit decided no this didn't work <laughs> broke up uh, a year later almost to the day decided to date again mm -hmm. um, and this time we made it past that breaking point okay um, and all was good and um, you know I think we dated for maybe three years before we okay Maybe two and a half before we, you know, that before like it was like, or, when's the, the ring coming, you know? Or, oh, okay. No, no, it was the second time around. Oh, the second time yes. around. Okay. So I remember for the last year, right before we got engaged, I, I, I knew I was ready because every time a big holiday came, you know, birthday or Valentine's mm -hmm. Day or Christmas, and he'd break out the little box, and I would think, okay, this is it, and I'd get excited, and then it wasn't. It was, you know, beautiful earrings or, you know, very, you know, nice necklace, yeah. but it was a tease. So I knew I was ready then because I was waiting for that diamond. And then finally it, it happened. Um, 2001 is when he proposed in okay. Greece at the Parthenon. Wow. Um, yep. And then we were married in 2002. Excellent. Yes. Now, most couples, when they talk about marriage, it's like, okay, let's get married. Let's have kids. Mm-hmm. Now, in my experience, that's what happened. But after we got married, we realized we might not be able to have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was a struggle about which direction do we want to go in? Do we want to adopt? Do we want to just get 40 cats? Do we <laughs> want to, you know, what do we want to do? Yeah. And, you know, adoption is 
it was a difficult decision for us because it's like, when do you decide that you're done trying to have your own kids mm. and you want to adopt? Yeah. Did you talk about that at all before you were married or? No. I mean, we talked about wanting a family and we were of the same mind. Oh, I want two kids. Oh, I want two kids too. We each come from a family of two children. So it was okay. sort of a natural, like, oh, me too. We had very similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, both Irish Catholic families in the city, you know, working class. Dad, my dad was a school teacher. His dad worked for um, the local government, and okay. just um, very similar. They're like townies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, one of the interesting things about us, though, is once we had been dating that second time around when okay. it was working, months into that, I remember. Well, I, I don't recall exactly how it came up, mm -hmm. but I remember the feeling of okay. He springs on me that he's adopted. And he already knew I was adopted. Oh, okay. Um, myself. So it's sort of like, oh, because I'm much more open. <laughs> For him, it was a you know, close subject. So when I remember finding that out, being like, oh my God, this is like another thing we have in common. Like, the, how just cool another, is that? Right. And, yeah, how cool is that? Um, so obviously, we, we knew that for a long time okay. before we got married. So I guess in the back of our mind, it was always, it's a neat part of our history. And if it comes to that, we would. Have no problem. It was, yeah, Do, you it was, know, it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer, so it wasn't something we discussed at length. Okay. Yeah. So, how did you end up breaking the news to your family that you were going to adopt? Yeah. So we, I mean, we tried on our own because you probably for a couple had of years. The, the parents going, so when are you going to have yeah, some no, grandkids? No, they were. Parents are very. Oh, okay. um, and they might have been behind the scenes, but they didn't give us a hard time oh, at all. Okay. No. Um, Don't worry, Michael. We'll get to you in a minute. Yeah. So I think um, the, the first couple first. years after marriage, you know, the first year we didn't try. Yeah. We wanted to have that first honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. And then we started trying, and it wasn't happening. But I wasn't worried. Yeah. Um, and then as time went on, I was like, oh, hmm, maybe we need a little help. So we started, you know, went to my doctor mm -hmm. and started looking at some tests and tried some IUI. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that wasn't working. Been there, done that. Right. <laughs> so then decided, okay, we'll try IVF and we had great medical coverage. So yeah. we're very lucky in that regard that we were able to try that. You're going through all of um, that. It's such an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, it is. And I, and I think that's, I'm glad we tried it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think. You know, we talked about it as we went through, like, I don't know how many more times I can go through this. Yeah. And so we'd go through it and be like, okay, we'll see what happens. And at the end, we'd have to reevaluate, like, okay, do we do this again or not? Yeah. And as we we're kind of closing, coming to the close of yeah. trying. Because um, there's only so many times, you yeah, know. Yeah, you just, like, like you, you do, you right? Like and you're the like, hamster this in the isn't cage. meant to be. Yeah. You know, and that's okay. Like, there's other ways to go about this. Right. We knew no matter what, we wanted a family. It didn't okay. matter how we got the family, just that we you got there. We didn't 40 cats. We didn't want the 40 cats. Understood. But we so got a, We did recently get a cat. We want cat. the one. One, one, <laughs> one is fine. It's one. not a kitten. Yeah, it's a kitten. Okay. Yeah. For now. Also adopted. See, our yeah. whole family, yeah. whole family is adopted. Who is Dada? Yeah. Daddy's adopted too. You know that. Yeah. So, um, now I lost my train of thought. Where was I? You were about having a kid. How many times yeah. do you oh, try? Oh, right. So we kept trying. Um, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over right, again and expecting right, different right. results. So I think well, while we're going through that, I we kind of had talked about adoption, okay. right? And we had some preconceived notions that oh, we'll be easy. We'll just sign up. We'll get you know we'll go through Catholic Charities, who at the time was still doing yeah. adoptions, and both Mike and I happened to be adopted through them. Okay. Um, and my godfather's daughter adopted through them. We had other people that had adopted through them. So okay. it was like oh, we'll just. We'll do that. Yeah. It was, Sign we weren't worried. Get a kid. Yeah. Have a you know, um, family. Yeah. That wasn't the case. Yeah. So. And I think yeah. that's, that's the thing that surprised me the most when we started looking into adoption was you really have to jump through hoops. Yeah. You have, you know, background checks and, okay, I'll let you tell the story. Yeah. But it's like you need a team of like seven or eight professionals. Yeah, it's like a full-time job trying, yeah. to, trying to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm good at paperwork, so I didn't mind, you know, part of me minded because it's like, oh, I can't believe how much I have to go through to, you know, qualify to, start a family. to have to a family. Whereas anybody else I'm could just get pregnant and have a baby and yeah. have a family. There's no, you no to there's nothing they have to do. Right. Of, Financially, yeah. emotionally, um, you know, employment wise, family wise, health you have to go wise, look at every your house, make right. sure it's baby proofed. It's like, right. I don't have kids. I'm not going to baby proof right. my house. Right. Out. So all that. Um, but I, what I would say is, I think what helped us is as we were wrapping up, the 
IVF process, mm -hmm. we started looking in at adoption and okay. we started researching what are some of the local options, some of the agencies, okay. you know, went to a Catholic Charities seminar, okay. looked up a few others, found Alliance for Children and um, White Horizons. Those were three of the ones that okay. we had I gone we to. we started looking at White Horizons. Yes. Yeah. And we have my, I have a cousin that adopted through there. Okay. So we have adoption. We, have, we come from big families. So we have people in our family that are adopted and friends that have adopted. So Excellent. again, it was not a, that, okay. that wasn't an issue for us, right? Um, it was just sort of how do we go about and which one do we choose and when do we choose? And so we started that process while we were still trying. Okay. Just so that, uh, for me, I didn't want to be behind the yeah. eight ball too much where it's like, okay, now we end and, and then we have to start all years. over yeah. again on this other path. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, okay, I want to do the research. I want to go to some of these seminars, learn about it, and learn so much. Like, I had no idea mm -hmm. how complicated it was. And, international adoption, domestic adoption, closed, semi-closed, open. And there's also um, like the whole DSS, DSS thing where you can do yep. foster to adopt or yeah. just foster. So just foster tons or, of, of ways to go yeah. about it, tons of agencies, right? And so I remember going, thinking, oh, I'll go with Catholic Charities, but then they ended up closing. They, they stopped doing it, so that was no longer an option. Like, okay. And then I, I remember going to that. Alliance for Children and loving the, the woman that spoke and she had adopted from Russia, and I could just say, like, she just seemed lovely and real and just such, I don't know, I just really identified with her. Okay. And so at the end of everything, I was like, okay, if we do this, I think we're going to go this route. And so I have to say, knowing that and having made that decision made it easier to end the IVF treatments because I felt like, okay, we're now on another path. Yeah. We're not starting from square one, like, yeah. we know what we want to do. Um, and we had a breakup meeting and with our doctor, and it was great. It was very emotional, but we're like, we're, we're done. We're I'm done. I'm gonna send you a fruit basket. And she was, yeah, she was crying. I was crying. We're like, thank you, you know, but it wasn't meant thank to you. be. Bye. And, Bye. Yeah. Um, and so I, then I do remember finally telling our parents mm -hmm. and our sisters. I have a sister, and Mike has a sister, and their attitude was like, oh, thankfully, it's about time. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've been waiting what for you to come to this on your on. own. You're like, what took you so long? Yeah. I'm like, ah. We had to get there in our own time. So what made you guys, and um, you said that the person from Alliance had adopted from Russia. Mm -hmm. So did you know right away you wanted to do international or did you? Um, as we were going through the process and learning about it, we determined international. And the reason for us ended up being in, a, in the States, it's mostly open or semi-open. You couldn't do closed adoptions anymore. So when I was a baby, okay. so my was a closed adoption. So let's back up a little bit for, viewers, yep. for the viewers. What is an open adoption? Open adoption. Um, it, it means that you've, you've probably met the birth mom. They okay. might have been select, they probably selected you. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be several meetings. It, they might be an ongoing relationship. Okay. Um, that relationship might mean visits or it might mean just sending letters and cards and photos, okay. you know, at Christmas time, that type of thing. Okay. It's really up to so the you birth wanted mother. to do this route? No, no. Okay. we did not want that route. We wanted closed. We uh, wanted okay. just adopt and move on, like have our family okay. and move on. Okay. Um, and that wasn't an option domestically. Okay. So that made international more attractive. Um, and then I, my cousin had adopted from Russia and, and good close friends of my husband's, um, they had adopted twins from Russia. And so Russia, be it was, felt like, okay, um, it was calling us. That works. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we chose me. So what do you think about being adopted? How'd you find out? Did you just always know or did your parents come to you on your fifth birthday and said, oh, by the way? No. I always knew. You always knew? I just knew. You yeah. never really told me. No. It was just always a fact. Yeah. Just I always a fact. Knew kind of like your name's I Michael. Adopted. I always knew that my name was Michael because uh -huh. they always called me that. Okay. And you knew you're from Russia? Yeah. Do you ever want to go back to Russia? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been back to Russia yet? No. No. Really long airplane ride, huh? You need a passport. Yeah. I don't want anything. He has a passport. You have a passport. Oh, yeah. International travel here. Oh. Right. Wow. Now, when you get older, do you want to, like, learn how to speak Russian? Don't know yet. No. We're still working on English. We're still working on English. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I pronounce words that I I pronounce like different words that I don't know. 
Some words I know, but I don't know how to pronounce. Oh, okay. So you are in third grade now? Yeah. So does that mean you are nine years old? Eight. Eight years old. Now, I remember the beauty of social media is when was your birthday? August? August 2nd. August 2nd. That's a very good day. Now, you did something special for your birthday. I did? You? I did? Come on. Well, I Thank had you. birthday party. Okay. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty standard. For like my first day when I came home, okay. we had like two parties because we couldn't fit everyone in. Shoving very popular. Shoving them all in. <laughs> shoving them all in the house. All right, move it. <laughs> now, you raised some money to give to the agency, correct? Well, she two did. years ago. Two years two ago. Two years ago for his birthday. Okay. Remember, we, did, we didn't do the agency. We did um, Home for Little Wanderers. We, he picked a local charity that works with orphan okay. children. All right. Um, we, he wanted to give the money to an orphanage in Russia, okay. but we weren't sure how that would work. Uh, okay. So we just felt, like, okay, it's probably a safer option to pick something locally, something okay. in the community. Um, and so, yeah, instead of having all the people come to the birthday party and bring mm -hmm. him a gift, we encourage people to make a donation to his birthday fundraiser. And Excellent. how much money did we raise? A lot. Yeah, just just shy of a thousand dollars. Wow. That we raised for that charity. That is really impressive. And you still got cake for your birthday. Still, we and still had enough party. money. We still had enough money for cake. For cake, is it a chocolate cake? I don't know. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah, chocolate. Chocolate's his favorite. So. Yeah, chocolate's my favorite too. Yeah. But my, my daughter doesn't like chocolate cake. Yeah, I know. Pretty scary, huh? So. Vanilla? Vanilla, yeah, she likes vanilla. Actually, she just eats the frosting and then leaves the cake there. I would have vanilla, but I would have vanilla with chocolate frosting. Anything with chocolate. That sounds good. Yeah. I, can't, I cannot have cho cho a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. That just no, doesn't that's, go. That's wrong. Chocolate, chocolate. Okay. Or vanilla chocolate. Okay. Not chocolate Got vanilla. It. So what are the some some of the things that you do in school? Learn. Well, like related to school, you do scouts. Yeah, I do scouts. I um. Play hockey. Play hockey. Do you I play other sports. Yeah, I do the golf. Baseball. Golf. Baseball. Baseball. Flag football. Flag football. Soccer. Soccer. No, I'm not doing it anymore. He quit soccer. Anymore. Qu soccer's done. Last last soccer game was last Jeez. weekend, right? When do you He's have enough it up. time to We go shouldn't to say that. Then the soccer coach, my hair would be like, oh, uh oh. We're okay. doing soccer. We'll, 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 we'll <laughs> rewind that part, okay? <laughs> edit. So we need we'll, to edit. We'll edit that part out. We don't want to break his heart. So, do you. I know. I don't have as many adopted friends as you probably do or that you're related to. Now, sometimes you have an adoption day and a birthday celebration. Do you do both? That looks Maybe like a restaurant. Well, yeah, I do. I used to. You used to? But then the place that we usually go to closed. Tell, a, tell her about the place we would go to. It's a Russian restaurant. Hmm. So we go there on the adoption day. But and then we would. Well, you'll have to find another Russian yeah. restaurant. Yeah. I don't think we'll find one. And you, did you like the food? I think you did. I, I did. I liked it. Yeah, that. you liked it. The mushy thing? I don't remember what it's called. Borscht? The mushy thing. Borscht. Oh. See, when he was a baby over there, because we, we got Michael when he was one year old. Okay. And so he was eating. Yeah. And he loved beets. He loved borscht. He loves the borscht soup. Wow. Yes. So when he came home, um, he liked beets for a little while. And then he didn't get them here. <laughs> mm, I don't know how to cook beets. <laughs> I don't either. So that actually brings me to like another question. You said he was a year when he finally yeah. came here to yeah. be with you. When did when were you notified that a match was made? Yeah, um, that and whole process went that pretty process? quickly. So I remember having our breakup meeting with okay. the doctor in December because I remember it was around the holidays, and. By March, we had finished all our paperwork, our home study, okay. all the financial papers, all the documents that we needed to submit um, were in by March. 
and they came, they did the home study in March, and then was sort of a waiting game. And I'm thinking yeah. it's going to be a year. Yeah, sometimes it's right? like, yeah. But um, end of May, they called us to say, all right, you have a week. So it must have been the very end of May because we're over there early June. Um, so basically you have a week to get your butt over to, to Russia. And they help you with that. The agency, you know, they have a travel agency yeah, they work with and translators and a driver. And um, so they, they help set you up with people that okay. can make that happen for okay. you. But it is, it's nerve wracking. You get the call. And I remember being at work at, at Target yeah. um, at my company and we got the call. Well, we we got to get we, on an airplane. Right. I, we got to we gotta look at all the, yeah, I think <laughs> we had like five business days maybe. Uh, but we had to get everything like, Oh, okay. So you had like to make you sure that your work. I got a document all the time. I had to leave movies. instructions for. I remember working on the instructions for colleagues, and okay. that they knew what to do to cover for me. Um, get a book the flights, find a hotel. Now, pack. did you go to Moscow, or did you have to go to some other area of Russia? So, um, and we, when you so we were invited, okay. and we knew nothing. We just knew okay. you have an appointment at like eight thirty in the morning with the Moscow agency that handles okay. adoptions. They have a baby for you. We didn't know the gender, age, health, now, region of the country. did you have some say in gender? Did you care? We did. Um, we didn't care because we thought we'd have multiple children. We would have loved one of each, but we, would, we didn't care. Mm -hmm. um, so when we told them we didn't care, they're like, okay, you'll probably get a boy. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Um, so it just they said it was much more common oh, to cute. adopt boys from Russia. I'm like, all right, fine. Okay. Um, and I remember, you know, wanting a baby and kind of being disappointed that going through the process that, oh, no, they, you know, the baby at the youngest was going to be like a year old or maybe six months, but it, mm -hmm. you know, could be up to three years. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so we yeah. specified, you know, we want as young as possible and as healthy okay. as possible. Yeah. Um, but y you just, you don't know. Okay. Um, and so when we got the invitation, we knew nothing other than we have an 830 appointment, show up. <laughs> show up, and then, you know, someone would meet us at the airport and help us. And they were great, just wonderful people. Okay. Um, and I remember going to the office and we're with our translator and again we know nothing and they're talking to us and our translator is translating and they start saying things about Michael that it's a boy I'm like okay it's a boy and um, he was 10 months and like, oh, oh he's under a year great okay um, and they they commented several times they stressed he's very healthy very healthy because we're also you know yeah. adopting internationally um, just delays with with kids being in orphanages okay. um, or the medical problems. Maybe mm -hmm. they, a lot of children are abandoned if they have medical okay. issues or other things can come up. Right. Um, living in a group home or that was actually going to be my next question is, did you have yeah. to talk to earlier intervention once he was over here? Yeah. And so, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, but that was one of the things you have to kind of wrap your mind around, too, that you're filling out in the form that, you know, yeah, the mother probably smoked or drank or maybe did drugs or uh, there, there's probably something now, did you physically. Find out, did you receive like a checklist? Oh, of, no, because oh, okay. we had nothing. Because you had nothing. That's right. You <laughs> right? So that. we just, so the, 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 we're learning it all while we're sitting in that office. Okay. And she kept stressing how healthy it was. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, and then. Almost to the point where, wait, why just, are you telling because me? Because it was so different? unusual. Oh, okay. It was so unusual. Okay. And which we learned that at the end when we were finally bringing him home and going to the, the U.S. Embassy and, and sort of one of the stops you have to do right before you leave and looking around at all the, 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 par the new parents with mm -hmm. their children. It's like, wow, yeah, you know what? We are really lucky. Like, he is healthy. Um, when we brought him home, his pediatrician said, it's as if he was raised in your own home. He was perfectly That's what you want to hear. Healthy. It was yeah. just like, oh, there's so many dream. other unknowns yeah. that it's yeah. like. So he, li he was about an hour outside of Moscow. So they consider it Moscow region. Um, so that's where we travel to every day to visit him. Um, we did that in June, and then. So how long were you out there the first trip? Probably a little less than a week, maybe five, six days. Oh, okay, I was thinking um, like a three-week time. No, oh, okay, no, about a week, and then come home, and that—that's the hard part because now we know this is our little boy. <sighs> we love him, him, and you we have love to leave him, him and we gotta leave him. Oh, um, but we knew he was like we loved the people he was with, like just really good people. So. Okay. That made it a little easier knowing that he's in good hands and he's healthy. Mm -hmm. so there was no immediate health risk. Okay. Um, it was just hard emotionally. Like, this is our baby. Yeah. Like, we want our baby now, yeah. right? So I think it was July 
Yeah, I know it was July. We got the second call. They're ready for you to come back to do the official adoption. So we so go this back. Is like a month later. A month later. Okay. We get the call. Um, so we go back in July and we officially adopt him. And we got to spend a little bit more time with him, but they still don't give him to us, even though it's official now. And I don't know why, but um, we had to come home for a week and then go back a third week, and then it's so that you had to go three times halfway around the world, three times, three separate times. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the third time, we were able to finally have him with us from day one, and I have to say that was amazing because I remember thinking initially, like, oh, I just want to get my baby and come home. But it ended up being really great. It was just the three of us. We rented an apartment, and we'd go down to the Kremlin and have picnics on the lawn, and um, we just really all bonded. And Excellent. you know, we, we knew so you were we, able to do like some touristy thing. Yes, when so, we had yeah, exactly because okay. then most of it was just waiting for right. them to say we could go home now. So most of it was just us getting used to each other, you know, and letting him walk. Like he wasn't. He wasn't walking before, but we could tell he was ready to. So as soon as we got him back to the apartment we rented, we're like, okay, go, 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 go. And um, sure enough, he was walking, stubbed his toe. <laughs> Not very happy about that, I'm <laughs> sure. But um, he was, and then just all the, all the pictures we have from that time, just big smile on his face. You know, I think he knew. I think you knew. You're a smart kid. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So... I remember when we started looking into adoption, and you touched upon this a little bit, we got scared because they're like, oh, you need a lawyer for you. We, we, were, we hadn't decided we wanted to go the international route, yep. but we were leaning toward that same reason why you were with the open the clothes versus, versus the open, closed. Yep. But they were saying, oh yeah, you need to hire a lawyer for you and a lawyer for the child and a lawyer for the birth mother and you need to have a pedi uh, pediatric you know person on there and you need a gene uh, like a geneticist and you need and they're like rattling off all the you need yeah. a case social worker and you need this and I'm like it's going to take a whole army you know and that's kind of what yeah. we were afraid of and yeah. you know so that's why we're like okay let's just go the international route yeah which has different issues, issues, <laughs> um, or just not issues, obstacles, challenges, right? Things you have, you have to just do. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you had your your team was basically like the agency. The team was all through the agency. Okay. Um, so they they hooked us up with the now, right your people. agency here worked with that agency, yes. so you didn't have they, to find. No, no, they. Oh, um, okay. One of their specialties was working in Russia, so it's Alliance for Children. They're a great organization. Okay. They're in Nina, Mass. Okay. Um, they do they just do internationals? No, so no. They, well, at the time they were just doing okay. international, but internationals changed so much, and Russia has closed. So they ended up. Russia's closed now. I think they're closed again. Okay. Uh, it's hard to keep track. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. And it wasn't like Guatemala, yeah, like yeah. open and closed. It, it, that's like, the thing. They're always closing. Yeah, they warned us. They're always closing. closing. They, they stop allowing adoptions for a while and they kind of go through a reaccreditation process. Because they close them, no one can get out. Well, they don't let the children be adopted internationally, right. so in a way, no one so can get out sometimes. Leave. Yeah. So, but could other ki people... Could other people go visit them? Yeah. Yeah. The whole country's not closed. But, but, but could, like, American people go there and just look? Yeah. Go, go tour? Yeah. Oh, I want that, but too bad. <laughs> You're going to be a world traveler, aren't you? Now, when eventually you said you went over there, over to Russia the first time, knowing nothing, yeah. did you end up finding out anything about Michael's history, like oh, his yeah, birth parents? Um, a little or bit, but it's, it was so hard to understand. Like, again, it's all through a translator. Yeah. Um, I wasn't so sure they if they did like, gave show you us, They showed us a, a photograph of his birth mom. That's so cool. she was a young woman, I think like in her late 20s maybe mid-twenties, um, not married, um, had two other children already, just mm -hmm. couldn't take on a third. Um, they, they didn't have the birth father's name okay. on record, but they all seemed to know him. Okay. So they would talk about how handsome he was and how tall he was. and So it was one of those things like, oh, every, it must have been an affair, local, everybody knew about it, but, but it wasn't official. Oh, so he's not in the dock. So we don't know who he is. We okay. just know he was tall and handsome. And that's my boy. There you go. He's going to be tall and handsome. He's going to be tall. So you're going to be a basketball player. <laughs> what? 
You gonna be play basketball? No. Probably hockey, right? No, no basketball. He I wants like to, what, are you gonna be a Bruin? Yeah. Yeah, he wants to be a Bruin. Okay. I don't really like basketball. I do, but I, I don't want to do I don't that. think you like running. I don't I think like, you like down. skating. Hand down. Yeah. There you go. Don't want you to play with your mic. I hate things that yeah. run. You don't like, like things that run? I don't like... You like to skate? I do. That, that's not running. That's like gliding. Yeah, gliding. Gliding skiing, is Skiing. You like skiing, right? Yeah. Gliding and the gliding one. Uh, I don't... Okay. Well, gi- I, at my school gym, they made this new thing. Okay. That, like, all before you have, you have to run, f- everyone has to run for two minutes, and if you don't run, then you have another extra two minutes. Oh. So every time I always have, like, an extra two minutes <laughs> to run. I didn't okay. know that. You, you don't know, you didn't tell me that. that. I know, I guess not. You gotta get those wheelies, you know, with the roller skates hidden in your shoes, and then you can oh. just. Yeah, we're like, ha ha. Yeah, I'm sure they, they, they'd figure that out soon enough. No, just like, oh, I'm just my shoes. Bring an extra pair of shoes. Be like, oh, I'm gonna go bathroom, but I still need to see your shoes. Do the switch. I hope these are the smart shoes that I was gonna change in. Okay. But you really. Okay. I got another question for your mom. Sorry. It's all about mom tonight. Well, it's all about you, but she's gotta talk about you. Yeah. (sighs) While you still like it. Yeah. While you still like me, right? Okay, now, just in my thought processes, going to Russia at the last minute, or virtually last minute, for three times, that's putting a lot of stress on the credit card. Oh, yes, (laughs) yeah. Now, how much does a typical adoption cost? I mean, it's so difficult to say, because if you're doing the international, there's all the adoption fees, right, associated okay. with just a typical adoption, okay. like what you pay the agency. But then you have to add on the travel. travel. And so I think at the time we might have spent twenty five to thirty thousand on agency fees. Okay. But we spent another thirty thousand on travel. Yeah. Okay. Um, the flights alone were ten thousand dollars combined well, yeah. over the three trips. Um, the hotels were astronomical. Um, they were six, seven, eight hundred dollars a night. Wow! For just a regular run of the mill, like, this is not yeah. glamour ho- living, right? It was just not the Hilton. It's, no, you know, like it was just Motel Six. Yeah. Or <laughs> um, and then we got smart on the last trip, finally, and rented a hotel. I'm um, no, I'm sorry, rented a, an apartment, okay. and that was like maybe three fifty, four hundred. And again, not it adds up. Yeah, so I would never spend yeah. four hundred dollars on, on a hotel room, on a really nice hotel room. Never mind. You know, a crappy hotel. <laughs> yeah. Now there are some like, I mean, are there like tax breaks or tax incentives that you can? There are recoup um, some of that money. Yes, there are. I, I think each year. I, I don't know what it is now. At the time, I think it was eight thousand or maybe ten thousand. Okay. Um, in terms of adoption credit, that that, that you could write okay. off through your uh, taxes. Okay. So that they, when you file the okay. following year, they would take off some of that. Okay. So I think we did see a little bit of a refund, but you know. It's much better than eight. money. <laughs> oh, gosh, what, yeah. what you received was, oh, my there was no price. Yeah. No, no. So, because I remember, again, I'm going back six, seven years, domestic as well as international, minus the travel, were still about 30 grand. Yeah. But that's why yeah. some people opt to explore the DSS route. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because DSS is like, it's free. Very, almost. yeah. It's like it might be free or, uh, yeah, very inexpensive. Um, but you know, you have to weigh, weigh the, you know, everything in mm-hmm. there because usually DSS kids have been abused or the parents were right. or they could less their than stellar or, or um, well, that even happens during regular domestic, you know, the oh, oh exactly. Because I have a friend yeah. who oh, actually. That happened, yeah. She finally was able yeah. to adopt on her third attempt okay. because the first, you know, one time the birth mother changed her mind yep. and the second time there were issues with the birth father. Yep. And then the third time she finally yeah. ended up yeah. having right. having good luck. Yeah. Well, the thing with the, I think with DSS, I don't know too much about that particular option. Mm-hmm. Um, but my understanding is often you're fostering the child before 
okay. being able to adopt yeah. them. So it's during that fostering period that someone could change yeah. their mind well, or a relative can come forward um, or... There's uh, still like a six month yeah. Which would transitional be devastating. or... Devastating. If you bring, and it happens too. Yeah, and yeah, it does. That's so. why this person advised me of getting yeah. a team of specialists and the, you know, the yeah. team of lawyers and I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. But you know, how, how often does this really happen? But you never know yeah. because, okay. Yeah. Um, you learned about the birth mother. Were you ever able to meet her? No, oh, no. Did you ever want to? No. No? No. Okay. Did you ever think about adopting a second child? Uh, yeah, we, we tried. Oh, We tried okay. several different ways. We tried internationally, went back to Russia. We tried domestically. Okay. We tried doing a semi-open okay. um, adoption. Um, and nothing worked it was um you know for a while it was devastating and then finally mm -hmm. after years of of trying um we decided you know what we can't live in this limbo anymore yeah um it's just not meant to be and you know what we're really lucky because we have him yeah you know yeah. and so michael wanted a brother or sister but recently we we gave in and we adopted a kitten. Got a cat so i don't know kitten baby brother sister i would want it, it, so this would be the kitten. This is the kitten. This is the baby brother, sister. Even. No. -uh. Oh, uh, slightly uh, more. No, no. Oh, slightly more the kitten. No, I said even. 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 Oh, all right. You know, even. You know, all said. All right. Oh. Dropping down. So yes, we did. We tried. Oh. Um, and that's when we explored different okay. options. So when we came back from Russia, um, one of the things we had to do with the international agency is, for a period of time, you have to submit sort of wellness reports okay, um, and photographs and kind of update the government on okay. how it's going. So it's kind of like a semi-open adoption, but, but to the but government. Only to the government, right. And so that if anyone over there wanted to look up, they could, you know. Okay. Um, and, and it was only well, for a couple for of years. Too, so yeah, but they, it wasn't, it's not like okay. it's for life. It was sort of like for a year or two, maybe. Oh, I, I forget okay. the exact time frame. But in doing that, that, and then realizing, well, well semi-open would be similar. Like, you don't meet the person. Mm -hmm. um, they're not visiting you, but you send letters the and agency. photographs to the agency. And then yeah. if the birth mom wants to contact the agency and look up, they can't, you know. So I've, we kind of came around on that idea. Like, oh, well, okay. I'd be okay with that if I'm sending it to the Russian government. I, I mm -hmm. certainly would send it to yeah. someone here, you know, that gave up the baby. Sure, right yeah, sure. So. You know, no problem. So that made us a little bit more open to okay. exploring it. Um, plus the fact that initially we, we decided, oh, we'd go back to Russia, but they had told us they were going through some problems at the time and that it was going to take, you know, two or three years. Mm. So like, oh, oh okay, mm. why don't we explore the domestic? Okay. Um, so we did that and, again, went through all the paperwork and the home study very quickly and was matched with the birth mother very quickly. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, probably too quickly. Um, because it was a scam. Oh, no. Yeah. So, um, for six months, we paid the agency fees. We paid her expenses through the agency. And the week that the baby was due, mm -hmm. um, she fled the state. Didn't show up for her last doctor's appointment. Fled the state. Um, she was in the state of Maryland. Ended up going down to Florida. The police caught her oh. down there. Um, and we found out that it wasn't that she changed her mind. It was she never had any intention of giving up the baby. Oh. She actually had contracted with another family oh, no. in addition to us. So That's she was like take, a lifetime movie plot. It is a lifetime. I know. It's like, yeah, it totally. So she was taking money from us and from the other family, two different contracts. Ours was through an agency. The other family was through a lawyer. Nobody knew, right? So she's just getting the money. And the reason it all came out in the end, I mean, I, she must have assumed... She could just change her mind because you're yeah. allowed to change your mind, and that's yeah. it, you know. Um, so she probably figured that's what she'd tell each family. Okay. And um, what happened was the lawyer for the other family, who they were in New York, um, they were contacting her doctor to get the medical records. Okay. And the hospital, the doctor said, "Well, why are you calling? We've already given them to the the agency. 
the agency. Well, what do you mean the agency? And so it came out that that lawyer found out that oh. she was working with two families. Oh, okay. um, and so because of that, we were able to, well, we weren't. We, the other couple were able to prosecute. Um, and she did go to jail for a little while. Okay. Um, and we were witnessing their case. Since we were the first family they had signed up with, there was no fraud committed with us. It was when they, oh, she entered into the second okay. agreement. So we lost a ton of money oh. and a lot of confidence yeah. in the process. Um, and I remember when it happened, we were devastated. You know, we were, you know, we had our bag packed. You know, we was going to be a little girl, yeah. it was a little sister. We were all set to go to Maryland. And it all kind of fell through. And so our recovery plan, I remember we went to P.F. Chang's. And with Michael, and we're like, all right, we're doing three things. We're going to go to the circus and have some fun. We're going to take all the vacation time we'd saved up and all the money we'd saved up for this baby, and mm -hmm. we're going to go to Disney World. <gasps> so we did that. That, w that helped. Awesome. And we're going to go back, and we're going to go to Russia. We're going to try this again. We're not going down like this. We were going to try again. Okay. Um, so we went back to our initial agency mm -hmm. um, and did the Russian thing. At that time, however, they, Russia was changing a lot of its rules and okay. guidelines and what they would and wouldn't allow. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if it's still this way or not, but at the time they had decided that they were no longer allowing healthy children to be adopted internationally. Uh, okay. They wanted to keep them in the country. Mm -hmm. They felt like they were losing too many people, I guess. Okay. Um, so the only children available were ones that were severely and sick okay. um, and we we kind of knew that going in that okay I think we can handle any like a physical handicapped mm -hmm. or anything that we could you know if medical treatment here could help mm -hmm. um, we now were, were you still looking that. at as young as possible yeah. or yeah. okay um, and so once we got over there we um, so all three of you went over to Russia no our plan was because we knew we'd have to go three times if based on before so our yeah. plan was we won't take Michael until the final trip okay. when we get the baby and we're all going to be a family and then we'll, you know, he'll, okay. we'll, we'll bring him back to where the people that cared for him, let them see. It, okay. You know, we, we had this whole thing mapped out where it would be a great reunion. reunion. You stay with Nana and Grandpa and Gupka. So um, we went over there and the, it was a, our experience was 180 degrees different from what it had Ooh. been before. Um, you know, we worked with the same great people. But it wasn't, you know, it's not their fault. Yeah. It's just everything had changed. So we were presented with um, a beautiful little girl that my husband said looked just like his mom. Baby photos, okay. right? So we're like, well, maybe this is meant to be. Maybe that's a sign, yeah. right? Um, but we had a pediatrician over there that came, um, recommended through the agency. They helped set it up. Okay. She came to the orphanage and examined the child. And she's, you know, there's... Um, there's brain oh, okay. damage. Um, she also had dysplasia, dysplasia and her, was in a, um, a cast. And, and we didn't think much of that. Again, we thought, well, that, mm. that's probably something we could help her with yeah. here. But our whole thing all along was, I don't know, we can't do anything with the brain. Yeah. So we didn't want fetal alcohol syndrome. Yeah. Or, um, it, yeah. Just because it's so hard raising a kid, raising a kid that's diff differently abled. Yeah, I think it's one thing when it happens to yeah. you, but it, like, I, we just couldn't go into it. Right. Especially yeah. where our parents are helping us out, we have him to think about. If we didn't have other children, mm -hmm. maybe. Right. Um, but it was something that at the end of the day, it was really hard. It would be oh, said no, be. and yeah. it was a very difficult mm -hmm. conclusion to come to, um, and then. We still didn't lose hope because then we was like, okay, the next day they'll show us a different child. And they did. And this child had um, fetal alcohol syndrome. We're like, okay. you know, we can do anything but the brain. Yeah. Um, and then they showed us a third child who had water on the brain. <laughs> so it was brain injury after brain yeah. injury. And we're like, you know what? We can't. No. Yeah. And but then I remember them saying, well, you'll go back to the first baby now. We're like, no, no, no. like, no, we'll, we'll go home. We, no. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did. We came home yeah. and oh, um, be so hard. signed up with another agency, <laughs> tried to do domestic again. Um, and we had several close calls, but as you mentioned, last mm -hmm. minute, somebody changing their mind. And then the agency we were working with got 
purchased but you know acquired by a bigger agency okay. and the women we were working with were let go and it mm. just sort of like okay so we stayed with the new agency for yeah. a little while this and then wasn't, wasn't we were like working. low on the totem pole you know like we just weren't Mm -hmm. a priority for them and um, I remember we got a few phone calls nothing ever came of it and finally it was like you know we've spent so much money and we're living in limbo not yeah. knowing oh yeah you, it's like planning like, right? it's like, like pre-kid all over yeah, again with yeah. the, the whole fertility treatments right. you know you're living in limbo is yeah. this gonna work is this not gonna work right. and it's an emotional roller coaster and so finally we came to terms with like mm -hmm. you know what it's not meant to be we're very lucky we are mm -hmm. so fortunate we have our family and we would have loved to have more mm -hmm. um, but right now, that's but it, just yeah. not in the picture. Yeah. So I think that was maybe two years ago that we stopped. Okay. Now we're going to rewind a little bit. Okay. Because I'm looking at my notes again. And because our journeys were similar um, for the beginning part mm -hmm. of yeah. it, before your adoption journey, how did you react to people? Did, did people ask you about starting a family? Because I just remember, um, you know, well, why don't you just adopt? Or um, I wanted my child, I didn't want to be pregnant in the summer, or I wanted my child to be born in June, yeah, or, yeah. and I'm just like, be happy yeah, with. So I was wondering, did you get any of that? Yeah, you know, I honestly don't recall. Like, if I did, nothing I want to block it out. out. I just remember after a while, though, being very sad. I'd you know go to you know Mother's Day would come around and be like, yeah. "When are we gonna have our kid?" You know, or go to so other people's. So I feel sorry for myself on Mother's Day type, but yeah, or you, you know, you go to the baby shower, you see the cute little clothes, and like, "Oh, when's it gonna be our turn?" You yeah. know. So there were those moments of self pity, you know, waiting like, "When's mm -hmm. yeah?" And never, never jealous on the other person's bill. I was happy for my friends when it happened, but yeah. just sort of like, I want my turn too, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but no, I don't remember anyone. Okay. Yeah. I can't, not that I can recall. I just wanted to like yeah. smack them upside the head yeah. going, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now, I think we already touched upon this, but do you ever look back and think there was anything, there is anything missing from your family? No. Well, no, we, we wish we had that second child, yeah. but... Um, yeah, we moved on and we realized, no, wasn't meant to be. As she yawns. <laughs> Yawn. It's past your bedtime, um, isn't it, yeah, sir? Uh, it is coming up on that bedtime, yep. Now, do you, um, so, no. Michael, do you tell people that you're adopted? Do you care? Is it an issue for you? Some people ask, and I say, yeah. Some you people cool? ask, I do. Do you think it's neat that your parents really, really wanted you, that they basically paid your college tuition to go over to Russia to get you? Pay my college tuition, that means no college. Oh, you'll still go to college. Good. <laughs> they could have bought a new car. How's that? But they bought you instead. They, they, they went and found you instead. Does that feel kind of special? I bet the car doesn't. The car doesn't. Well, they don't have the car. Yeah. Well, the car will. They have you and a cat. They have you. Forever and You ever and a cat in the fish. <laughs> Oh, and the fish. And the fish. Go the fish, too? Yeah. Okay. A little fish. Up. All right. So what, looking back, what was the best moment in your adoption journey? Uh, day one meeting. Like we, day one of like the when moment we first you, met him that first day. Okay. But then I'd say when we came back the third trip, Okay. And we we're able him. to keep them and go back yeah. to our little apartment and have them just walk around and yeah. get them out of the orphanage clothes and put our clothes on them and like just start having them learn his name because you know, we did mm -hmm. change his name um, and just have him you know learn to. Now your husband's name is Michael. Yes, is that's what he's changed. Michael he's a junior? Not quite. Okay. Um, Different middle name. He Michael has two middle names. Oh. One for each grandfather. Cool. And Which dad is, only has one. Michael Joseph. Michael Robert Joseph. No, but. Yours. Uh, yeah, You're Michael Robert. My, he's yeah. Michael Robert. No, daddy's Michael Joseph. You're Michael Robert Joseph. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I think that would get very confusing because a relative of mine named his son a junior. And I guess naming the son a junior isn't hard, but going back and making you a senior. 
Oh, adding is that. the oh, hard part. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. okay. Yeah. So, what is your advice for either an individual, mm -hmm. you know, like a single parent, or someone who wants to be a single parent, okay. or a couple, if they want to explore the adoption option? Oh, go for it. Um, there's so much information out there. You, it's, I think it's easier in some ways because you can do it at your desk, mm -hmm. you know, your computer, just Google things and start looking at it. Um, a lot of the agencies have free seminars, um, informational sessions that you can go to, mm -hmm. um, information that they put on their website. So I think, you know, start early and, and start digesting it. And there's so many different options and you have to figure out what is right for you mm -hmm. and your partner and both be on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes that can be the hard part that like you might go to some of these sessions and you like one agency and your husband or wife likes the other agency or you want international, what they want to do domestic. And it's a journey you have to go on together mm -hmm. and figure out where, where do you compromise, right? Um, so I think, you know, start, expand, you know, explore, is, do as much and research as you can, questions ask questions. So you don't get into the... Yeah, and then just, and at the end of it, be open-minded. So you might decide on the journey that you think you're going to have. Okay. Chances are it's not going to go the way you think Life it will. Life never does. No, exactly. Does and so you kind of just have to go with it and okay. take that leap of faith, but it's so worth it. So. Now, as far as like, you know, going for it, are there particular questions that they should ask? You know, do you do a Google search? Are there ways to avoid going down the road that you went to at, went through yeah with, well i, I the think state. the mistake we made with the the bad agency the was bad. it was um not an agency we knew someone had off the cuff had recommended it so we're like oh okay we'll go there we didn't research it okay. i didn't so do your research due diligence on that one yes um everything because everything had been so easy for us right I, we had no drama at all before that Plenty of drama afterwards, but Plenty so we were naive. Yeah. You know? Okay, so ask lots of questions. Uh, uh, yep. Read the fine print, especially on the contracts. Okay. Um, especially if you're paying money um, for birth, mother expenses, things of that nature. Okay. Um, find a reputable agency. Find, know what you're getting into and if there's a cap on those expenses because it okay. is expensive. And, you know, if you have multiple failed adoptions, um, which is not uncommon. They, right. they, they don't work, you know, and usually if you fail and you can kind of go back again and you stick with it and eventually works out. But mm -hmm. um, you just want to make sure you understand what that looks like financially and what you can right. afford. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'd say do your homework. And you don't feel you Always like, tell me that. I always tell you to do, do your my homework. homework. Do your homework. Do my yeah, homework. Do your homework. See, it's important. Throughout your whole life, Michael. Homework. Yep. Homework. So you get smarter. Yep. You don't get homework. I, I create my own. Yeah, like, but you're Life so lucky. Life is her teacher. You're so lucky, like, oh. I think I'm lucky. I am, I am lucky. But if I, I, I were you right now, I'd be like, I'm not going to make any homework. No? Okay. No homework. And you have to go to school tomorrow? Um. Yes. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, unless mom decides to, you know, unless it snows like three feet tonight. No, Probably not. Not I don't yet. Think that's gonna we'll happen. We'll try back in two months. Yeah. yeah. So I forget. Did you end up going back? To well, we did, and we had the failed ones. That's where we had the okay. water in the brain and. No, the, no, no. But I uh, oh. say you used the money to go to Disney World and. Oh, it, it, we did. So that's when we went back to Russia to try the. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that I didn't thought, work either. I thought it was just like a family vacation. No, over no, there. no. It was. Do you trying. have a plan on doing like a family vacation back over and? I think when he's older, if he'd like to, we we're up for it. Um, I mean, we like to travel, mm -hmm. so it, it all depends on him. Because I'm reading on Facebook, it's like you're doing a lot of stuff. Well, I have a childhood bucket list for him. Oh, We're, you do? We stay very active, don't we? What are some of the things on your bucket list? Because we still have a couple minutes, so. Well, we knocked off a few things this year. We went to Legoland, right, in San Diego. You really wanted to do that in the San Diego I Zoo. Have you checked out the Legoland in, is it summer? Discovery You Center? went with your grandma. I went with, with Gupka. Gupka. And That's my grandma. Oh, yeah. 
dog on gun. Oh, we have to put Universal, Harry Potter World, right? We haven't done that yet, so that's I on the bucket list. I need a new wand, because I want to... You need a new wand? It, it must have flown away with the broomstick. Yeah. Off the Harry Potter land to get sold yeah. again. Oh, okay. Now, where is Harry Potter land? Is it in Orlando? <laughs> yeah, it's Orlando. It's part of Universal, right? It, it can be in Orlando, too. I think so. I think it is Orlando. You're right. It's, def it's not that's Disney. one of the universal. locations. Yeah. No, I knew it was a Universal, but oh, I wasn't okay. sure if it was in Orlando or oh, if it was a Universal yes. out in California. Because yes. there are Orlando. two Universal that's true. Studios. That's true. There might be. There's like one that's like. There's one.